that it's time for the Griot Storytelling Circle. Welcome. My name is Sister Martha Ruff, and I'm your Griot, your storyteller. And today's Griot Storytelling Circle is a time for memories, memories of Christmas. We all have special memories that we keep for this time of the year. It's a time of the year when our families come together, our friends come together, and we celebrate. Whether you are celebrating Christmas or Hanukkah or Kwanzaa, this is a time to make some special memories. And today we're going to remember some Christmas memories. One of the things that we do at Christmas time is to get ready for Christmas. So one way to get ready is with a Advent tradition. Advent is the time leading up to Christmas. It's four Sundays before Christmas, and each day you light a candle. Each Sunday you light a candle to remember something special about Christmas. My family had a tradition of this Advent calendar, and you may see them in the stores sometimes where you would open up a window of each flap and read something special and then have a special picture underneath of that flap. And then all the way up to Christmas Day, where you would open up the last flap and you would see the manger scene and remember why we celebrate Christmas. Well, some of us, especially children, have special memories about Christmas and it's about that special person who tells us about giving and sharing, and that's Santa Claus. In the African American tradition, there is a story about Santa Claus, and you can find it in this book called Christmas Gift. And it's called, How Come Christmas? It was a cold and blustery winter day, and it was just right for Sandy Claus and Mrs. Claus to be in their cabin with the fire roaring, and Ms. Claus was, was donning some socks for all their children, their grandchildren. And Sandy Claus was smoking his pipe, remembering how nice it was to have children around the house. But they didn't have any children around the house anymore because all of their 14 children had grown up and gone and gotten their own homes. Yes, said Sandy Claus, I sure do miss them children. Well, said Ms. Claus, did you know that Ms. Mary and Mr. Joseph just had a new baby? Is that a fact, he said. Well, they just had it in all this cold weather, she said, and everybody in the neighborhood's been trying to get to see that newborn baby because they think he's going to grow up to be a king. And if they're not nice to him, that he'll be mean and cut off their heads. So they're going and taking all kinds of things, fruit cakes and pound cakes. Hmm, said Sandy Claus. That don't sound right to me. What's a little baby want with fruit cakes and pound cakes? Well, that's what they're doing, said Ms. Claus. And they sat and they talked and the fire was, was going down. And Sandy Claus said, you know, I think I'll go up and see Ms. Mary and that baby and see what all the fuss is about. And that's just what he did. 
Sandy Claus got his scarf tied around his neck. He put on his galoshes and he started out in all that snow until he got to Ms. Mary and Mr. Joseph's house. And he reached in his pocket and felt, yeah, it's still there, the gift that he had brought for the baby. And when he went inside, everybody was crowded around, and Sandy Claus had to push folks back so he could get a good look. And he leaned over, was a pretty baby boy, and Sandy Claus took his finger and just tickled him under his chin. And before you knew it, that baby was giggling. <laughs> That's right, said Sandy Claus. You don't need all of these trinkets and pound cakes and fruit cakes. Maybe you'd like something to play with. And out of his pocket, Sandy Claus took a bright red apple. It was the last apple of the season and put it right in the baby's hand. And that baby looked at that apple and he started really laughing. <laughs> Everybody knew that Sandy Claus had found just the thing to make a baby happy. In one minute, the light in the room suddenly became bright and everyone covered their eyes because the Lord had suddenly appeared. Oh, they were so afraid God had come and they didn't know what to do. But God just walked over to Sandy Claus and said, hmm, you're mighty handy with the children, Sandy Claus. Well, evening, Lord, said Sandy. Uh, I, I just do what I knows to do after raising 14 children. No, Ms. Claus done most of the work, but I, I helped out some. Yes, said the Lord, you's mighty good with children. Matter of fact, I think you ought to help all the children. All the children, Lord, said Sandy. Yeah, you could make them happy and that would make my world so much better. Well, uh, if you think I can do it, Lord, said Sandy, I'd be glad to help you out. All right, said, said the Lord. And so the Lord reached out and touched Sandy Claus with his special touch and said, from now on, Sandy Claus, you will live forever and make my children happy. Well, Sandy Claus liked that part about living forever, but he said, Lord, do I have to make them happy all the time? Well, said the Lord, that is a mighty big proposition. Maybe if you just make them happy once a year, how about that? That's fine, Lord, said Sandy Claus, and that's just what happened. Once a year, Sandy Claus comes and visits all the children and makes them happy. And that's how come Christmas, because Jesus was born for the grown-ups so they could tell their problems to him, and Sandy Claus came to make the children happy. And that's the end of that. Well, if it be sweet and if it be not sweet, take some and send the rest back to me. That's how they end their stories in the islands. Well, Sandy Claus is not the only memory that people have of Christmas. The other memories they have are of a church and celebrating the nativity. Now here in Laurel, our Hispanic community celebrates the nativity. 
Sometimes you may have seen them down on Route 198, and they have a living nativity scene. And they will bring someone as Mary, and someone as Joseph, and the wise men, and the shepherds, and they all come together and make a living nativity scene. Well, the other thing that happens at Christmas time, our Christmas memories, are of those folks that have gone on, that have died, and we remember them, especially this time of the year. And here in Laurel, we have Roberta's House that helps people who feel sad about their loved ones that they no longer uh, can enjoy the holidays with. So, in this story, we have both of those things happening. We hear about a Mexican story where Maria had to sing a special song. Now, it was Christmas Eve, and Maria and her family were getting together for the posada. The posada? That was a special parade that was held in Mexico, and everyone would get together in groups and go from house to house looking for a place for the baby Jesus to be born. And for several days, they would go to one house and say, is there room here for the baby Jesus to be born? And there would be no room. And each night, they would go with their candles lit and looking for a place for the baby to be born. And the next day was Christmas, and that would be the day when they would find a place for the baby Jesus to be born, and they would go to church and celebrate. But just as Maria was thinking about all that, the telephone rang, and it was one of the elders from the church calling to say that one of their members, Jose Yaira, had died and they were going to have the funeral tomorrow on Christmas Day. And would Maria please sing for the funeral? Maria, of course, agreed, but she thought about it. She wanted to do something special for this family that had lost a loved one because she knew what it felt like. She had lost her brother at Christmas time. And so Christmas always brought back memories of him. But Maria didn't want to sing alone. She didn't think she had the best voice. So she tried calling her family and friends to see who could sing with her on Christmas Day. And no one was able to do it. And so the next day, Maria went to the church, ready to sing the best she could. And Jose's family was sitting in the pews, and the priest began the worship service, and Maria was called on to sing. And as she stood in the big church, she felt so alone, but she reached inside of herself to find that best voice that she could as she began to sing, Ave Maria. And as she sang, it seemed like she could hear other voices. She even looked around and there was nobody else there, but she could hear it in her head and in her heart. She could hear angel voices singing along with her in a loud, majestic voices. And Maria sang as if she was singing to the glory of God. At the end of the worship service, the family came to her and said, you were so good, you sang so well. Thank you so much for being available for our funeral service. And Maria felt so much better that Christmas, a Christmas when she could remember her brother 
and she could help a family to have good memories of a Christmas when they lost a loved one. If you are thinking about loved ones this Christmas, remember those special memories and be happy about having shit spent time with your loved one. Well, we always remember Christmas for special songs. What are some of your special songs, your favorite songs for Christmas? Of course, our little ones love to hear songs about as simple as jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Or if you are African American, you might sing a folk song like Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Whatever song is your favorite at Christmas, I hope that you will sing it, enjoy it, and invite others to come and sing with you. One of the favorite things we do at Christmas time is caroling. And so we might go from house to house singing and enjoying each other's company. And always at the end of caroling is hot chocolate and cookies. So think about joining your family and friends for caroling and make some memories about singing this Christmas time. Well, sometimes our memories of Christmas are a little bit scary. And this is a true story about a trucker who had a scary incident happen at Christmas time. Gary Soto was driving his truck on Christmas Eve. He always made a practice because he knew a lot of the guys wouldn't drive on Christmas Eve. They wanted to be home. But he always chose a job where he could leave early Christmas morning, Christmas Eve morning, and be home by Christmas Eve night. And so he did the same thing this Christmas Eve. Early that morning, before his wife and children woke up, he was in his truck getting his load and driving down the highway. And he got to his delivery right on time. Unloaded the truck, had some time to say hi to some of the other guys who were working that day, had a cup of coffee, and was ready to head home. Gary was driving down the road carefully because it was a cold night and it was snowing and he didn't want anything to stop him from getting home on Christmas Eve. He was very carefully watching the road, looking behind him, making sure that, wait a minute, there was something on the side of the road. A baby? Uh, couldn't be. But Gary put on his brakes, and that 16-wheeler groaned and moaned as he stopped suddenly and pulled over to the side of the road. Gary went back. It didn't seem like anybody else was stopping. Had he really seen? And about 200 yards back, he found it was a baby in a car seat by the side of the road. He didn't care how it got there, but he could see that it was just like his little boy. Don't worry, little guy, he said. I'm going to take care of you. And Gary picked up the car seat and took the baby back to his truck cab, called 911, and waited for the police. As he sat, he kind of tried to talk to this little guy and said, can you tell me anything? But the little baby sat quietly. Hmm. Gary couldn't imagine how he got out there. 
When the police came, Gary told him what had happened, and the police took the baby and said, don't worry, Mr. Soto, we'll find out who this baby belongs to. But Gary gave them his phone number and said, please call me, let me know what happened. And that night, as Gary and his family finished decorating their Christmas tree and getting ready for bed and thinking about getting up on Christmas morning, Gary got a phone call from the police. And he said, Mr. Soto, you have made one family very happy. This baby was in a car that was carjacked and the thief rode around not realizing that there was a baby in the back seat. And when he found out, he put the baby on the side of the road. Thanks to you, that family has their baby back and they will have a great Christmas. Gary Soto was so happy that he was able to be a part of that family's Christmas and that his family was having a wonderful Christmas knowing that a baby was safe and warm and enjoying life. You have some stories too that you want to tell, some Christmas memories of things that were good, things that were scary, things that are a tradition in your family. Pass them on and share Christmas memories. This has been your Grio, Sister Martha Ruff, and I would like to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. A Happy New Year, a Happy New Year, I wish you, I wish you a Happy New Year.